Hi, my name is uh, Chef Andy Pastore. We're here at Clifton's. Uh, we are going to make my version of a classic dish, uh, turkey pot pie, something that was done throughout the 1930s up until about the 1960s. At Clifton's, we cook the equivalent of 40 turkeys a day. We brine our turkeys for 24 hours. Typically, uh, salt and sugar is all you need to do a brine. You could use the brine that I give you in the recipe as a basic guideline. You can add ingredients such as orange, rosemary, thyme. In the winter time, if you want to have a little sage in there, uh, peppercorns, roasted garlic, all of those things will infuse into your turkey very nicely. What you can do at home is you can save chicken carcasses, you can save turkey carcasses, um, and you can make your own stocks and broths. And uh, you don't necessarily have to use them for making a pot pie. You can make your stocks and freeze them and take a little bit out at a time whenever you need it. Uh, but I find that making your own stock is beneficial, it's cheaper, and it tastes a lot better. Have the finished product, which is our turkey right here. Uh, this has been brined, it's been poached, and shredded. I use a roux, which is classically used. Roux is equal parts fat to starch. We're gonna take our butter and we're gonna melt it down. We have onions, we have celery, we have carrots, we have thyme with a little bit of parsley, salt and pepper, and our turkey that we talked about earlier and some sweet peas. If you wanted to add mushrooms, like a nice uh, portobello or shiitake, and do a mushroom turkey pot pie, that would work fantastic. Our butter is pretty much melted. So we're gonna add, and we're gonna whisk. And we're doing this on a low flame. This can be done in advance. It can actually be done up to a day in advance. You can use hot roux with hot liquid. You can use cold roux with hot liquid. You can't use cold roux with cold liquid. What will happen is your roux will not incorporate properly and you'll wind up with really, really lumpy uh, broth. Once everything is incorporated, make sure you don't let it settle into the corners. If it settles into the corners, that's when you're gonna have problems because you'll burn the starch. You wanna keep it moving. You don't have to you don't have to hover above it, but you do wanna periodically stir it. And it's a very light golden brown, similar to like a Nestle's chocolate chip cookie dough. I'm gonna pull it right now. We're gonna put our pot on a medium to low heat. And we're gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil. And the first item I'm going to add is my onions. And we're going to begin sweating our onions. Sweating means you don't want to add any color. You just want the vegetable to become soft. The season in layers. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt, just a little tiny bit, to my onions. A nice little sizzle going, that's pretty much what you want. Once the onions are starting to turn from a white color to a little bit of an opaque color, we're going to add our other vegetables. Celery, our diced carrots. We want to season in layers, so we're going to add a little bit of salt. We're not necessarily looking to cook our vegetables right now. We're looking to release the flavor. So once we have this sweated out, we can go ahead and add our turkey. If you like a lot of turkey, add a lot. If you like a little, add a little. You can always save the extra turkey that you have uh, to make a turkey salad, make pasta dishes out of it. We're going to add our stock. You want to bring it up to a consistent simmer. Now, I find that if you add it a little bit at a time, it's a little bit easier to incorporate. You'll see that it looks more like a gravy now. If it gets too thick, too fast, you can add a little bit more stock to it. Simmer for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. So at this point, it's cooked, we're ready to eat. You have a salt and pepper mix. You can do just salt if you'd like. I'm gonna add a little bit. I wanted to add a little truffle oil. We have a little bit of thyme and a little bit of parsley. Gives it a nice, opens up the flavors a lot. 
cheese are gonna go in. A little bit of cream to it. Gives it a nice smooth uh, homey feel. And then we're gonna stir that together. We do ours in a jar. A little mason jar, 16 ounces. Take a ladle. And go all the way to the top. We wanna add our pastry. But we already have our puff pastry cut out, ready to go. It's a six inch round. Basically just gonna put it right over the top like a seal. And I'm gonna gently cup it. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't even have to be even. It just has to be a seal. Let's have a little bit of egg. I'm gonna brush that all over the surface, on top, around the edges. And that guy is ready for the oven. Okay, we're gonna go in the oven, 350. We're gonna place that right in the center. Like so, all right, so it's been 15 minutes since we put our pot pie in the oven. We're gonna check on it real quick, make sure we're not burning away in here. We have a beautiful pot pie ready to go. I like to garnish with a little bit of rosemary. And uh, actually putting the rosemary sprig at the very end when it's nice and warm, it actually infuses the rosemary flavor into the pot pie itself, so it gives it a nice little boost right at the end. But, hope you enjoy it.